Falzoni, and I chose to do my research project on women in art history. I chose this topic because I have been inspired by courageous and powerful women um, learned within this course, and I wanted to go a little bit more in depth on those and a couple new ones. Um, first, women's role. Women in the Middle Ages were not as important as men. Their stories and creations were naturally watered down due to not being as liberate as men. This um, was also due to not being offered the same level of education, which resulted in women not being able to read and write. The exclusion from getting knowledge and ability to express themselves has made it challenging to find women's histories. However, it is not non-existent. Um, I included this self-portrait of this female nun, and it is her holding a, a manuscript, kind of like, hey, listen, I wrote this, not the men. <laughs> So I thought that was kind of interesting. Um, a little bit on the history. Female med medieval artists can be seen in manuscript illumination of the Middle Ages. These include Endy, and yeah, Ende, a Spanish nun from the 10th century, Gouda, a German nun from the 12th century, Clarissa, a laywoman in a Bavarian scriptorium, also in the 12th century. Women were mainly known for manuscript illuminations, embroideries, and carved capitals. However, it was discovered in documentation that women were also butchers, brewers, wool merchants, ironmongers, and more. And you can kind of see like women not being in their norm, not being portrayed as their norm in these photos here. So it's pretty interesting um, and very unique, very unique color choices. But very cool. Um, the three women I really want to focus on, though, are Empress Theodore of the 6th century, Hildegard of Bingen um, from the 12th century, and Guan Daosheng from the 13th century. First, my favorite, Empress Theodora. She was um, Emperor Justinian's wife of Byzantine. And she was an advocate for women's rights and performed other charitable acts geared towards women. As Emperor Justinian was ready to forfeit his command during the Nika revolt um, with riots and chaos, Theodora then stepped in with a political speech that inspired many along with her husband. Her name was also mentioned in all laws passed during his reign. So I think she was doing a lot more than a lot of what we realize. Um, and I put this mosaic um, because it's that famous mosaic that we saw in class as well. Um, she is represented as fierce and bold and courageous, and we can just see how serious she looks, like she is ready to do some serious um, political changes. <laughs> and then I really love the gold, just really enhancing her her power. Um, second is Hildegard of Bingen from the 12th century, um, German Benedictine abyss and composer she was recognized by by her musical morality play and letter where she preaches in defense about nuns being able to wear white silk dresses and loose hair um, she believed divine was both elements of male and female and she was thought to have psychic abilities with spiritual visions which she then wrote about and inspired many through her wise works um, she was had a really extraordinary mind full of math, biology, theology, medicine, and philosophy, philosophy, just to name a few. Um, and I put this photo here because it, this is supposed to be her and here are her visions coming through as she is writing them down. So I thought that was really amazing. Um, third is Guan Dao Sheng. She shifted the norms of ancient um, China, with popular masculine artwork collected by emperors, she challenged gender norms and represented herself as a man with brushstrokes, um, and then even stating in poems that it was, quote unquote, too controlled for a woman. So her work was thought to be a man's, basically. Um, sp she specialized in poems, and her most famous work was bamboo paintings. Bamboo was also recognized as a masculine symbol, which meant hard to break. And her work is really seen as defiant with her poems, where she expresses her awareness that painting is reserved for the masculine, and then mentioning her obedience to her husband quite frequently in her works. So that's pretty interesting. And then this is a photo of her work here. And it's very neutral, you know, it doesn't look super feminine. It definitely could have been a masculine 
figure, um, but it's pretty phenomenal. And lastly are my references where I got this information. I hope you liked it.